Welcome to SelfDiscoveryRadio.com, where the orchard of wisdom is just ready for picking. We celebrate your why, the journey that you've taken that inspires someone else. We support your services. We support your story. Come and be our guest. Become a host. Be an author with us. Come and see what we've got. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Sarah's View of Life. I am Sarah Troy, here of selfdiscoverymedia.com. Struggles, struggles in finding our purpose, struggles in fulfilling our purpose. Yes, it, it can be difficult. You see, being in purpose has its struggles because... It is something that we have to strive to accomplish. It is something that comes from the heart and the soul. And it's something that will still have its obstacles. Why? Because that's part of the challenge. How much do you believe in it? How much do you really want to get it out there? How much do you want to perfect it? And so there are going to be struggles along the way. But we're seeking that purpose. It's the reason for us being here. It's our part to play in life, in this life, our journey. Once you find that purpose, your life becomes more meaningful, more of a commitment, a step up, and more of the owning of your self-discovery and how abundant you really are. But it doesn't mean that there aren't going to be struggles around us or that there aren't going to be times where things are just a little too much. I know those times in building here, Self-Discovery Media. We were Self-PLV Radio, Positive Living Vibrations, which I changed to Self-Discovery Radio. And then realizing that radio was limiting us, I changed it to media because we are more encompassing of what we're doing now with video, going into books, directories, eventually documentaries, etc. Has this been a challenge? Oh boy, has it. Have there been struggles? Yes, and there still are. But is my commitment firm? Yes, it is. I have had many, many of people telling me, you're doing it wrong. You should do it this way. This is how you do it. Do it like so-and-so. And you know what? When you find that meaningful purpose and it comes from your core, that is when you know you're doing it right. Now, yes, of course, you can listen to advice, and some of that advice is absolutely relevant, and you apply it to what you're doing, and it will help you expand further. But it has to agree with the soul, the core of you, and the heart of you in order for the spirit to ignite into action and for your mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. You see, in following that pattern, you're always going to be on the right path. Does it mean the struggles are going to be over? No. But that does mean it's going to be easier on you because the commitment, the confirmation of why you're doing it, the meaningful purpose, your meaningful purpose, is guiding you. I have wonderful hosts here. I've had wonderful hosts in the past. They come and go because their lives change and take them into different directions. Some don't realize how much work there is in putting together a show every week. And yes, it is work. You have to book the person. You have to get the material from the person. You have to make sure the person turns up for the interview. You have to get then all the content, the show, all the information back to the producer, moi, who then edits it, creates it as a video, creates it as an audio file, creates a blog that it's all inserted in, ready to ignite that show. Then, of course, there is the sharing of that show and celebrating it and making sure it gets out of there. But why do we do it? We do it because we want to get the message across. We want to get people's message across, those that are making a difference in the lives of others. And we do it because we care about those voices. We care about sharing, collaborating, expanding. We know there are people suffering out there and if there's somebody that's been interviewed that can help with any information, those that are suffering, to make their lives better, then that's why we do it. I have had some hosts that have had their own challenges. Some could continue to host and some not because of those challenges. It redirected them. I've got hosts right now that are going through challenges. One of them's husband has just had a triple bypass 
and she is launching a tour and she does this show and she does other things and it's a lot of strain on her. Her commitment to her husband is obviously strong but her commitment to the people that she serves is equally as strong. I have another one that's facing her own challenges, balancing her work life and family life and marital life along with being a new host, getting used to the whole system and finding her groove. I have another one, a very successful entrepreneur. She has had her own struggles and redirection, finding that right accommodation that suits her. But she loves doing the shows and the people that she's bringing because they inspire us because of what they're doing helps humanity. I have another one who gives out so much every week in his work as a pastor, who speaks to faith, who speaks to spirit, who speaks to that wonderful divine energy and is out there pouring his heart out and his soul out every week to everyone, yet he's going for his own challenges. So when you see people up there, whether it's us, as podcasters here in Self Discovery Media, or whether it's a movie star or radio star or anybody that's out there, do not assume that they're not going through struggles. You see, that's part of the journey of the struggles. What makes it easier are the tools and the wisdom that we gather along the way in order to deal with those struggles. But when you really are in commitment of something, you're going to move forward. And perhaps the biggest struggle is that of being true to who you are what your purpose is, what you're here to do, and not being influenced by other people's dictation of how you should do it or how you should be. You see, you've stepped into a role that is you, that comes from you, your meaningful purpose, your divine presence, your beautiful instrument. And that is what you're sharing with people, and that is enough. You will grow and perfect your skill as you grow and immerse yourself into it. But there will always be somebody that will come along and say, but why can't you be like? Oh, you should do it this way. I think that that is that. And you know, you can hear it. Maybe some of the advice is good. But maybe sometimes it's just people not getting you. They're simply not getting your message. Maybe they're not ready for it. Maybe they haven't given the time to listen to it. Maybe they just don't see you in the light that others do. Being true to yourself while you're in that self-discovery of your purpose and stepping into something that you commit to and having everybody else kind of be naysayers or telling you you're doing it wrong or you must do it this way in order to be successful can be very, very confusing and a little upsetting because it upsets your equilibrium, that balance that you're trying to find. And in that self-discovery of that meaningful purpose, if you do it from the core, the heart and the soul, that drive, your why you're doing it, it will put you into the right action, the right spirited action in order for your mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. You see, you can't think it. You've got to feel it. When you feel it and you truly feel what the message is, your thoughts will come into the proper information that you need in order to move forward. Now, I'm one for always seeking out knowledge on how to do something. Literally, I have thrown myself into this and learned as I've gone. And everything I do here in Self-Discovery Media has been a discovery. Can I do it? Didn't think I could do it. Oh boy, I'm doing it. Is it perfect? No. Could it be better? Absolutely. But what it is, is honest. It's honest. I bring to you every week, honesty from those that we interview, from those that are interviewing, from myself. And we seek those people that are honestly have stepped into their meaningful purpose that is making a difference in the lives of others and making a difference in their own lives. But do not think that we have it all together because no, we don't. You see, we're just that flawed human being trying to live a divine life. And in our divinity, in that beautiful divine presence and energy of what we are, we are trying to match that energy or bring that energy to the human side of us so that we can do what humans need us to do. Struggle is always going to be there. I struggle every week. I've recently been ill. I've had the flu and it hit me twice. 
the first time I worked through it, croaky voice and all, I did the shows. The show must go on. The work must go on. I was busy. Second time, all of a sudden, for the first time in a very long time, I had no shows booked for that week. And that was the week they decided to flatten me. You're on your back. You're going to sleep. I'm not going to let you do anything else. And I slept. Honked right out. I did all the admin for my other host shows, but I didn't do any shows myself. And you know what? In the past, I might have felt guilty. Oh, why didn't I have a new show out there? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? And you know, this time it was, Sarah, I get the message. It's time to place value upon yourself. There are 2,000 shows here for people to discover. There are other host shows out there that are wonderful. There is so much to discover about self here and self-discovery media that they've got plenty to be going on with. It's okay to spend that time with self. That can be a struggle because you see, we're always trying to meet an expectation. If you're a solopreneur or a small entrepreneur with a small team, what you get out of it is only what you put into it. So if you're having to take time out, it can be rather disconcerting. Well, how can I make money? How can I support myself? How can I keep doing this? How can I keep reach people if I take time out? If your message is true, your platform is true, the people that you're working with are true, they will wait for you. We struggle so much on perception, how people perceive us. I battled with that most of my life, always trying to be what other people wanted me to be and never succeeding because I was never enough for their expectations. Until I had to turn my eyes in and look at myself and discover that I'm enough for me. And being enough for me, doing what comes from me, from my beingness, I can be enough for others. You see, when you step into self, despite your challenges, despite your struggles, despite your imperfections, and just go ahead and do something that means something to you, it will resonate out to others. Those that are ready to hear, to see, to ignite themselves, will hear you, will see you, will need you. We can't force ourselves on anyone. All we can do is be an invitation. If we are that inspiration, for whatever work we're doing, and it's inspired someone, then that's the invitation that will have them ignite with you in whatever realm, whatever service, whatever business. So when you're looking at someone and you're thinking, oh, they've got it all together, they're rich, they're famous, or they look extremely successful, <laughs> don't be fooled, they have struggles. They have personal struggles, they maybe have health struggles, they have business struggles, they have struggles of balancing everything, of being there for everyone and allowing time for themselves, for their families, for living. I've interviewed people that have been extremely successful in their lives and they found themselves to be very poor. Poor in the heart, poor in the soul, poor in their spirit. Is connected in their minds because what they were doing was living up to other people's expectations, other people's dictation, and not living truly to who they were, what they were here to do, and to do it from a place of self-love. See, it's very important that you place importance upon yourself, not self-importance. Self-importance is all about you placing importance on yourself at the expense of others. But the importance of self is you investing in self, finding something to love, igniting your heart, discovering what your purpose is. And you see, if you try and find your purpose intellectually, you won't, because you see, your meaningful purpose comes from your heart. It's driven by your soul. It will ignite your spirit into action. Then your head will know. We have to get out of our heads and step into our hearts and feel what we need to know. Yes, you can do this and you can do that and you can do that and it looks fantastic on a resume. But what does your heart want you to do? What's meaningful to you? What really lifts your spirit into action? What is that divine calling that's wanting you to step into your beingness so you can do what you are meant to do, what you're here to do? Something that comes from a place of love, 
of heart. Sometimes the struggle is with self in fighting oneself. But yes, I should be doing this. I have a degree in that. I have a master's in that. I have a family to feed. I have a this, I have a that. And everything's about duty. Everything's about doing what is expected of you. But what are you doing that comes from the heart and soul? Is there going to be a transition with all your people, with your loved ones, your family, in order to step into this new realm? Yes, there is. There will always be that. But if they love you and you say, we're going to have to downsize or we're going to have to change a bit because I cannot continue the way I am, I need to do something that is more meaningful. And of course, you're not just going to uproot and just do. It's going to be transitional. Gradually, maybe, that balance until you can get to a point where you can say, we're very sustainable where we are right now. Now I can totally immerse myself into my meaningful purpose. Everybody's going to be struggling a bit on that. But when they see happy parents, or you see children that are happy because you're giving them more time, or you're being a wonderful example of self-love, that enrichment, that seeding, that watering is going to set them on the right path in life. I was in that realm where sacrifice myself for my children, sacrifice my happiness, until my children came to me and said, enough of this. We can't stand you being unhappy. And for me, I thought it was just me being unhappy as long as the children were okay. Don't underestimate the kids. Don't underestimate your pets. They know you better than you do. And they know when you're unhappy and they don't want to see you unhappy. So we had to go for a transition. It shook everybody up and it put everybody on a different path. But it was a path of their own self-discovery. They'd had security and this and that, even though it had been a dysfunctional home. And now, with all those teachings and skills, they went out on their own exploration and discovered themselves. And because they had to go through some struggle, it prepared them to face the struggles that life was there waiting for them. So we can mummy cuddle and we can protect all we like, but we need to prepare them as well. We need to show them there isn't a straight path, that it isn't an easy path, there isn't just a push a button or download an app, that life is about participation, it is about exploration, it is about self-discovery, it is about meaningful purpose, it is about service, and it is about being willing to constantly try new roads, explore new avenues, and become. So when you're looking at someone and you think they've got it all, I promise you they've had many struggles on the way there and they may still be struggling. It doesn't make them any less of a person. It makes them more because they're still managing to be off service while they're going through their struggles. They're still managing to help you go through yours while they're going through theirs. And sometimes they don't have the help that they're giving you for themselves to go through their struggles. And sometimes they need to take that time and they need to reach out to other people to find that help that's going to help them get there. So, struggles are a part of life. It doesn't always have to be hard. It doesn't always have to be negative and it doesn't always have to pull you down. It's what you feed. It's what you water. It's what you love that will grow. So water that seed of possibility. You may acknowledge right now, where I'm at, I don't like and I don't want to be here anymore. Then that's the time to listen to your heart. What does your heart love to do? Oh, my heart loves to play music. Or oh, my heart loves to do this. Or oh, my heart loves to do that. Well, step into your heart presence. Ignite that heart. It will show you the path. It will show you that maybe you're meant to be this, or you're meant to be that, or you're meant to do this. And you can do it from a place of heart, using all the wonderful skills that you've gathered along the way, and just redirecting them onto another journey. Never sell yourself short. Never stay in an area or a place that brings you down, that makes you feel sick 
that disconnects you from your heart. A paycheck just to survive is not worth it if it's going to cost you your life in the long run. If you're in a job that is stressful, then go and find something that's meaningful outside of your job that lifts your heart and purpose. You will bring that heart and purpose into your job and you'll ignite other people around you in that same spirit and maybe you'll be able to change the dynamics of where you work. But you've got to find something that is of service to humanity, that lifts your heart, that ignites your soul, that puts your spirit into action and that your mind agrees with. It doesn't have to be a struggle all the time. And when we look at those straddles, just as challenges, something to learn from, something to overcome, something to go through. And then when you come through it the other side and go, wow, I didn't know I could do that. Look at that. Look what I achieved. Look who I became. Look what I was able to do that I didn't think I could do. And sometimes that straddle is that lesson that you needed to know. So don't assume. Know that everybody goes through them. You're not alone. When you hear other people's stories and how they got through those struggles and what skills and tools, knowledge they use in order to help them go through it, those skills and tools can help you as they can help you with their services. We're in transition again in delivering a business discovery directory. Slowly, we're going to be building all the wonderful people with their services. They would have been interviewed here, so you would have heard their story. And now you're going to know more about their business and what they're doing. We have affiliation programs because we want to support the people that we interview in what they're doing. We want you to know more in how they can help you. So we're expanding. Is it a challenge? Yes. Is it a struggle? At times. Does that stop me? No. I will do what I can do because I need to do what I'm doing because I believe in it. And if I can't do it all at once and I have to do it step by step, I will do that. That's okay. It's only a struggle if I push against the wind. But if I turn with the wind at my back, it will propel me forward so much more. So you don't ever get anything out from me already completely done before I launch it. I do it bit by bit, step by step, one drop in the ocean at a time. And I build on it as I can. And as I do, I'll be bringing more of these wonderful people to you. Remember to place love and value upon yourself above all. You see, when you do and you step into that love, that abundance that's within you, your cup runneth over and everybody around you benefits. So be willing to go through your struggles. Face those challenges. Understand, no, it's not always going to be easy, but if it's meaningful, it's worth it. And what you learn about yourself and what you learn about life and what you bring then to your services is so much more. When you look at someone and you think they've got it all together, understand they've got their challenges too. They're a little less assuming, a lot more gratefulness for what they're doing for you, even though they're going through what they're going through. So until next time, folks, I wish you harmonious struggles that lead you to your meaningful purpose, that beautiful service you bring to mankind, and may you find the strength and courage and the love of self to learn from them and become so much more than you are. Until next time, bye for now. For more wonderful shows like this, please go to selfdiscoveryradio.com, podcast and see our lineup. And if you wish to support us, we have a funded button. Please stay tuned for our next show.